Hello to all my viewers. My name is Dr. Puru Dhawan and today I will be talking to you all about a very common symptom that can be seen in people who are suffering from Parkinson's disease, which is known as dystonia. So let me begin by explaining the very basics of dystonia. Dystonia is a symptom that can be seen in individuals suffering from Parkinson's disease, which involves spasming and stiffening of the muscles. These movements are completely involuntary in nature, which in simple words mean that the individual does not have any control over the sudden movements. Let me give you a small example to simplify it further. If you want to lift your arm up, you can, right? But what happens when your arm lift up when you do not want to? This involuntary movement is called dystonia, which occurs when the brain cannot give it proper command to the body as each and every knows that our brain is responsible for controlling all the movements of the body. Therefore, an individual suffering from Parkinson's start to lose control over bodily movements because there is damage being caused to the brain. Moving further, let us look at the types of dystonia an individual can suffer from. Firstly, we have something known as full body dystonia. In this type, we can see spasticity and tremors throughout the body that an individual can face. The second type is known as segmental dystonia, where the tremors can be seen in a specific region, such as arm yeah, or even leg of the Parkinson patient. Lastly, focal dystonia is the third type in which a very small part of the body is affected by tremors and stiffening. The affected region can be as smaller as a finger or a toe. I hope I made it clear to all you that what dystonia is and how it can affect a Parkinson's disease patient. All of you might have noticed at some point that there are certain individuals who keep on blinking without any specific reason. That is one of the effects of dystonia. Another symptom might be the drooping of the lip from one side of its own like this and then it getting back to the normal in some time. This is also another noticeable effect of dystonia. Apart from this, being unable to close or open your hand voluntary is another form of dystonia. Therefore, all these involuntary movements can be very commonly seen in individuals who are suffering from Parkinson's but let me tell you that actually there can be several other reasons such as brain injury or brain stroke or Wilson syndrome which can cause dystonia in an individual. Under any circumstances where damage is caused to your nervous system, dystonia can be a common symptom that can be visible. Therefore, I would advise all of you to get a proper diagnosis to conclude whether you are suffering from Parkinson or now that I have told you all about the dystonia and its symptoms, let me further move on to the treatment method. Commonly, there is no cure for dystonia, but as I always like to think from a broader perspective, I think it is very much possible to get the symptom under control. Let me explain. In a Parkinson patient, the first thing we see is the stiffening of the muscle, which can be very painful. I believe muscle relaxation can be used to get relief in the stiffness persistent for a long time in a patient. With this, all of you, you can also apply heat to the affected area, which will relax the tendons and the muscles. There are different ways that the individual can use in terms of heat application. Firstly, you can massage the area continuously with the oil, which is very effective in the terms of relaxing the muscles and providing relief. Apart from this, you can also take the aid of the machine that can be used by physiotherapists or gel pads that are readily available in the market. Also, I would like all of you to make sure that not to apply any cold packs or ice to the affected area under any circumstances. In my opinion, it is important to focus on the fixing the damage that has been caused to the brain with also making sure that no further damage is caused. Which is why I advise all my patients to opt for neuroplasticity. Not many know about this concept, but today I will take this opportunity to explain to you all about neuroplasticity and how it can help people suffering from the Parkinson's disease. In a human being, the neurons are created before we are born. The nerve cell cannot multiply in the number throughout an individual life at any point. 
but can reduce due to different reason. Now I know that all of you might have a valid question that how does development in the brain take place if the numbers of neuron cells does not increase. Let me tell you that the development of the brain does not depend on the number of neuron cells but on how the strong the connectivity is between the different part of the brain. Therefore the ability of the brain to modify its connection or rewire itself is known as neuroplasticity. A brain shock, Parkinson's or any brain injury that affects connectivity can be treated with the help of neuroplasticity. In my opinion, this can be done by bypassing the cells of the area that has been damaged in the brain. Whenever a certain part of the brain is hampered, many bodily functions can be affected, which may cause complication. Therefore, to bypass the damaged area in the brain, a strong connectivity is needed that can be achieved through the neuroplasticity. In an individual, neuroplasticity starts at birth and gradually declines as we age until it finally stops. But what people doesn't know is that neuroplasticity can be initiated again as well. In circumstances where there is a stroke or injury caused to the brain, it usually heals itself. Therefore, to bypass the damaged area in the brain, a strong connectivity is needed that can be achieved through neuroplasticity. In an individual, neuroplasticity starts at birth and gradually declines as we age until it finally stops. But what people don't know is that neuroplasticity can be initiated again as well. In circumstances where there is a stroke or injury to the brain, it usually heals itself and the process is known as neuroplasticity. But in a Parkinson patient, because the damage is caused at a slow speed, the brain is not able to recover by itself. Therefore, the main task is to make your brain realize that the solution lies within and it is the brain that can get it controlled back. For example, when we make our patient to do certain movement, the brain slowly starts to evaluate all the issues that the individual is facing and with the help of few pushes, the process of neuroplasticity starts all over again. Hence, with the help of certain method, I personally try that all my patients regain some control over their movement. With this, neuroplasticity also ensure that this disease does not become severe over time as we age. With old age, it is natural for an individual to lose their strength and movement gradually. But with this disease, the situation becomes worse with time. Therefore, I always advise all my individuals suffering from Parkinson to make immediate action towards strengthening their brain and nervous system. At Shriyas, we always look towards the long-term solution and by using Ayurveda and natural therapy in the treatment of Parkinson's and its symptoms, the results are always according to the patient's need. I personally believe that providing relief in terms of symptoms and lifting the standards of living rather than trying to cure Parkinson is the best possible way to go about it. I hope I was able to answer all the questions that you might have regarding dystonia and how to get relief. But still, if you have any doubt, Feel free to leave any comment in the section below. Thank you and take care. See you next time.